Hi. So we are now discussing about uh, the CMA part two, strategic financial management. The topic in this session is short-term finance. Firms uh, borrow money on short-term basis to meet some, you know, uh, short-term obligations, short-term requirements, maybe because of seasonal businesses, maybe because of covering our, uh, you know, inventory requirements. We borrow money and repay this amount back to the financial institutions in a short period. For example, our supplier is offering uh, a discount if you clear the bill within 15 days. In actual, the bill is to be paid uh, in a three months period. So we'll see that uh, whether it is good to avail the discount by borrowing money from bank or wait three months period by the time your inventory is sold, money is collected from customers and you can pay the amount full in full means what you are foregoing the discount in this session we need to you know be familiar with certain you know uh, terms like what is a short term finance what are the advantages and disadvantages of short term financing different types of short term loans available to a corporate and we need to calculate the cost of trade credit because when you borrow money from the financial institutions on short term basis there are some obligations there are some obligations from the financial institutions that you may have to pay some fee apart from the interest or sometimes you may have to hold some balance of your loan amount with the bank, which is called compensatory balance. Or we may issue certain, you know, uh, short term uh, notes called commercial paper, uh, banker's acceptance, etc., on which you need to pay interest for the given period by selling this in a discount. And uh, we will also learn how we generate money by, you know, uh, selling our receivables or keeping our inventory as a collateral by borrowing the finance from the institutions. Fine. What is the need for this short-term finance? As we just just now we discussed that our supplier is offering some discount so obviously it is better to avail the you know discount when discount is annualized like say for example by paying 20 days in advance the supplier is giving two percent discount if you pay on the due date you will forego the discount so is it worth availing discount by borrowing money from bank if the discount benefit is much higher than the cost of borrowing so it is yes uh, obviously advantageous then types of short-term financing like we may borrow money on short-term basis from banks we may sell commercial paper or uh, we may avail trade credit from the customer or supplier or we may sell our receivables, okay, which is called factoring, right? So we borrow money to have this money to pay our suppliers on time. We borrow money to buy some inventory when we need to pile up some inventory to meet our seasonal requirements. We also, you know, borrow money to, you know, finance our working capital on a regular basis. So when you see the short-term finance, the obligations are much lower 
as compared to much lesser as compared to the short term long term finance in case of long term finance you need to see you know various factors like you know the uh, you have to sign some covenants that to what extent you are you know paying dividends or what extent you need to maintain some ratios so there will be some you know requirements from the financial institutions which you need to meet whereas a short term finance you will have less obligations or less covenants from the financial institutions so we avail credit from the financial institutions on short term basis yep the main sources of short term financing include borrowing monies from you know the banks and other financial institutions but you know when you say short term finance this has to be repaid in a maximum period of 1 year maybe 3 months maybe 6 months but max period is 1 year the most uh, you know spontaneous credit what we get is from our suppliers yes as long as we maintain good relationship with the suppliers we can avail this trade credit or spontaneous credit means your supplier will be giving you a credit continuously when you pay the bills on time if you see corporate companies uh, current liabilities the major portion of current liability is in you know supplier balances that is accounts payable accounts payable means the amount which is due to the suppliers we availed credit from suppliers say for example we bought goods from supplier and we'll be paying this amount after say 3 months you pay the bill within 3 months yes supplier is happy then he'll give you further credit pay the bill after 3 months uh, within 3 months that will be extended enjoy the trade credit most of the trade credit is interest free so in a business the supplier sell goods inventory on credit with no interest so you no need to pay interest on that but just maintain you know the you know good relationship but paying on time corporates also raise you know uh, short term finance by issuing commercial paper the commercial paper is same like a you know promissory note issued at a discount at a discount means these companies issue commercial paper whose value is less than the face value say for example a commercial paper of 100000 dollars is issued by a corporate for 3 months period for 98500 all right so a corporate issues this you know commercial paper to another corporate or any individual or any other financial institutions for a period of 3 months at 98500 you are issuing in a sense your company is issuing a commercial paper of the face value of 100000 but you get you get 98500 now okay right and after 3 months you pay 100000 means what you are paying interest of 1500 for a period of 3 months all right 1500 for a period of 3 months if you annualize it 1500 times 12 months divided by 3 months because for 3 months you are paying 1500 for 12 months how much it is going to be 6000 it is going to be 6000 so if you calculate the interest on this amount 
divided by the amount utilized in the business, not 100,000 please. Why? Because effectively used in the business only 98,500. Yeah, so 6,000 divided by 98,500 times 100 will give you, what is the percentage? Yes, it is going to be 6.09% annualized interest. Don't calculate 1,500 divided by uh, 100,000, that is 1.5%, no. You annualized this amount, $6,000, and what is the amount that is effectively used in the business? It is 98,500. So the effective rate of interest is going to be 6.09%. This is the calculation we use to calc, you know, to find the effective rate of interest in case of commercial paper. Commercial paper is a marketable instrument which is issued by the corporates and it is uh, an unsecured document unless it is issued by a highly rated company means what a credit worthy business because there is no uh, security given against this so the corporates invest with a you know a risk that's the reason why they look at they look at the companies which issue should uh, be rated like triple a or a triple plus highly rated companies and the duration of the commercial paper is around 30 days to 270 days means what the repayment period is between 30 to 270 days commercial paper just simply assume that you are rising a promissory note for borrowing certain amount of money on short term basis. Commercial paper is unsecured document unless it is issued by a AAA rated company having a credit, a good credit rating. Yeah, perfect. So we know the sources of short term financing. We know that the companies borrow money only to meet some kind of short-term requirements from time to time it is not just only for a particular period of time over a period of time years together we instead they just borrow money pay the amount meet our requirements then you borrow money to meet your requirements it goes on like this then why don't you borrow money on long-term basis if this is a requirement on recurring basis it's happening yeah See, if you borrow on long-term basis, what happens is it is going to become a long-term debt. Yeah, you borrow money for like five years. What is the use when you need this money for only three months? Within three months, you are going to sell your inventory, collect money from your customers, and you can pay this amount to your banker. Then the next period, like maybe after 15 days or one month, you borrow, you, you buy goods on credit and you pay this amount to avail the discount. In turn, you will be paying again back in a three months time. So very uh, best source to the corporates to pay the amounts to suppliers to avail the discounts on, you know, uh, to avail the discounts on short term basis line of credits a financial institutions give uh, different lines of credit to a uh, companies corporates like say for example when you uh, have a financial you know agreement with a bank say bank gives you 2 million worth of facility to you this 2 million worth of credit facility comprising of consist of you know different types of loan there may be like a overdraft which is around say three hundred thousand dollars of two million there may be a short-term finance say one million there may be 
some LC facility, letter of credit facility of say 200,000. Just giving an example, there may be a bank guarantee or long term loan of say half a million. So your 2 million worth of credit facility consists of 300,000 OD, okay, of 1 million short term loan. 200,000 LC facility and a bank guarantee or long term loan of 500,000. So we have different lines of credit here. Means we can raise a short term loan of up to 1 million, of 2 million. So you cannot go beyond 1 million because the room available for short term loan in this portfolio is only 1 million. You can avail a discount, a OD of 300,000. Not more than that, because though you have a facility of 2 million, this portfolio gives you a line of credit of OD for 300,000. So maintain the line of credit with the financial institutions by maintaining your good record with the financial institutions. Companies, you know, enjoy the great trade credit from the customer suppliers. Trade credit is also known as spontaneous finance. Spontaneous finance means you just borrow goods on credit, sign an agreement that when you are going to pay this amount, keep a track of the payment dues, pay them on time, before the time, that you know builds the reputation among the suppliers and just pay them on or before the time due date as long as you maintain this good relationship with the supplier yes you can enjoy the trade credit but sometimes you know when a trade credit is issued by a supplier he may give you an option that i'm giving you 30 days credit but you don't need to wait for 30 days you can pay me if you have money. Yeah. What do I get if I pay before 30 days? It's obviously, right? When you pay in 30 days, you are clearing the bill. When you pay in 10 days, you are clearing the bill. What is the difference? No. We offer you some discount. Perfect. That is called terms of sale. Okay. Terms of sale. Say, for example, when a supplier gives you an offer called terms of sale of 2 of 10 net 30. So it means that the bill due date is 30th day. But if you pay within 10 days from the invoice date, I'll offer you 2% discount. So 2% discount if paid in 10 days time in 10 days time else pay full on 30th day see if you pay in 10 days time you will be paying only 98 dollars for every 100 dollars of bill this is the discount period, DP. Yeah. If you pay on 30th day, you will be paying full amount. If $100 is the invoice value, you will be paying $100. This is called net period. So no discount is allowed. Pay in discount period, within discount period, any day, you know, from 1 to 10, you will be paying only $98 for every $100. But if you pay on 30th day or any other day after 30th day, you will be paying $100. You are, you are foregoing the discount. You are not availing the discount. Why are you not availing the discount? Because I don't have money. Okay, fine. Can you borrow money from bank? Yes. Now you need to see alternative. When I borrow from bank, Bank will charge me some interest. Bank will charge me some fee. 
isn't it so what is the cost of borrowing what is the cost of borrowing and what is the cost of you know not availing the discount i want to avail the discount to avail the discount i should borrow money from bank so is it worth borrowing and availing this discount or not listen to me one is cost of borrowing the cost of borrowing is to be compared with two what is it cost of not availing discount so you need to know the cost of borrowing to make a decision whether we should borrow money from bank and pay the supplier enjoy discount no 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 if the cost of borrowing is higher than discount why should i borrow from bank better i will wait till 30th day i'll collect money from my customers and pay them so you need to you know have this kind of cost benefit analysis a cost benefit analysis like what is the cost of borrowing and what is the cost of not availing discount you are foregoing, foregoing discount if you don't pay your supplier within the discount period compare these two cost and the benefit now let us work on the estimation of the cost of short term borrowing yeah when you borrow money when you borrow money how much interest you are paying to the financial institution in addition to that is there any fee involved like sometimes we may have to pay a processing fee on the amount borrowed so what is the amount that you are paying besides interest and this processing fee is deducted from the loan amount so what is the net amount received for this we need to understand few terms we need to understand few terms they include like you are borrowing money from of a financial institution say for example $10,000 $10,000 this is the amount you borrowed yeah and it is the it is borrowed at the rate of 10% per annum whenever the rate is mentioned in percentage it is understood that the rate is applied for a full year yeah if you borrow money for half a year yes this is going to be 10% times 6 divided by 12 so you don't need to look for the interest rate with per annum per month like that it is understood that when it is mentioned in percentage it means this is annual rate besides this this institution is saying that you should pay you should pay you know this interest say for example upfront yeah say if you calculate the interest on 10000 for one year it is going to be ten thousand dollars times ten percent rate of interest so one thousand dollars of interest you are paying normally what happens here you are paying this amount after one year from now ten thousand principal amount plus one thousand interest amount eleven thousand but you know sometimes the bank will say that i am giving you ten thousand dollars but deducting this one thousand interest upfront effectively you will get only nine thousand dollars this is called a discounted loan discounted loan means what the loan uh, you know is dispersed after deducting interest discounted loan means the interest is deducted upfront you get only net proceeds so when you get only the net proceeds after deducting interest 
you calculate the interest like this thousand dollars divided by net amount received times hundred what is the rate of interest here you are paying thousand divided by nine thousand times hundred it is going to be yes 11 percent but the bank is saying we are offering loans at the rate of 10 percent yeah it is right yeah so it is called stated rate of interest whereas this one 11 percent or 11.11 percent is called effective rate of interest so you need to consider what is the effective rate of interest on a given load on the amount borrowed okay so what do you understand here stated rate of interest is different from the effective rate of interest so while borrowing this money you need to consider effective rate of interest because this is what happening whereas stated rate of interest is not the real interest they say on the document saying that we are offering at 10 percent but you're effectively using in the business is only 9000 after deducting interest yeah and effective rate of interest is always greater than stated rate of interest in business decisions whether to borrow or not you need to always consider effective rate of interest not stated rate of interest Say, for example, you are availing a discount of 10.2%. This is the benefit you are going to get if you borrow money. But just now we calculated the effective rate of interest. If it is uh, the loan is discounted, it is at 11.11%. So the cost of borrowing is higher than getting a discount of 10.2%. You are, you, are, you, are, you are enjoying a discount of 10.2% and you feel that, yes, we can borrow it 10% to avail this discount, 10.2%. No, no, no. Effectively, the rate of interest is 11.11%. It is of no use borrowing money and availing discount. Better you forego discount. It will cost you more, isn't it? When you borrow money to avail the discount, the cost of borrowing is much higher than the discount what you are going to enjoy. So effective rate of interest will help you to make decisions whether we should borrow money from bank or not. Remember here, discounted loan. Discounted loan means the financial institutions deduct the amount of interest upfront while giving loan itself. So effectively, you will be using in your business only the amount after deducting the interest in this case your annualized interest rate will be more than stated rate of interest in the loan document please consider effective rate of interest in your business decisions not stated rate of interest this is about the discounted loans Discounted loans, calculation of the effective rate of interest, which can be used in our business decisions to whether to borrow money or forego discounts. We'll discuss various uh, forms of short term finance in the coming sessions. Until then, uh, have a goodbye and see you in the next session. Thank you.